In the middle of the 20th century, books and stories, magazines and novels were so popular that there's a ton of authors who often have very famous films based on their work whose names you may not know. Hollywood was really obsessed with literary adaptations at the time. The production code really meant that they were really stuck in a lot of ways with the kind of ideas they could come up with. So they turned a lot to pulp authors and pulp magazines to find their stories. A great example of a pulp author who was hugely popular at the time that you may not know these days is James M. Cain, who wrote Double Indemnity. Double Indemnity started out as a serialized story in Liberty Magazine. It eventually was collected in various books and also actually sent to GIs in World War II. Along the way, it caught the eye of Billy Wilder, who wanted to adapt it for the screen. A lot of people wrongly assume that Double Indemnity is a Raymond Chandler story because Raymond Chandler actually worked as a screenwriter adapting Kane's novel. But Kane himself is really considered one of the fathers of noir fiction. One of the things that Double Indemnity does that is very edgy for the production code is it tells you how to commit a crime. It goes in extreme detail showing how you can commit insurance fraud, both from the point of view of an insurance broker and from the point of view of somebody trying to kill her husband and collect the money. Only sometimes you wish he was dead. Perhaps I do. And you wish it was an accident. And you had that policy for $50,000. Is that it? Perhaps that too. In the book, they are a little less attracted to each other and more kind of friends in crime. The Phyllis character in the book is actually a multiple murderer, and the main character is more interested in just gaming the system than actually his love for Phyllis. So Wilder adds a lot of emotion to the story and makes it less about two dark criminal types and more about understandable Americans who eventually get their comeuppance. He had a fall down at the well, broke his leg. It's in a cast. Broke his leg? What do we do now, Walter? Nothing. We just wait. Wait for what? Until he can take the train. I told you it's got to be the train. But we can't wait. I can't go on like this. Look, we're not going to grab a hammer and do it quick just to get it over with. There are other ways. Yeah, we're not going to do it other ways. Another great classic film noir based on a book is Fritz Lang's The Big Heat, based on the novel by William P. McGivern. The Big Heat started out as a serialized story in the Saturday Evening Post and was the kind of fun, hard-boiled detective story that people really enjoyed. There's a lot of plot, a lot of twists, and of course it made for a perfect film. The Big Heat is a great example of these kind of hard-boiled detective serial novels. It is a detective who is kind of out of control, he's gone rogue, he's beating people up, and a lot of people point to the fact that he is, in a way, kind of his own femme fatale, because everyone he touches just gets killed or maimed. It's a very dark story, but you can totally see why Fritz Lang was drawn to the original book. <laughs> But I'm not Lagana. With you dead, the big heat follows. The big heat for Lagana, for Stone, and for all the rest of the lice. Many people are familiar with the name Robert Block because he is the writer of Psycho, which inspired Alfred Hitchcock's film. What they may not know, though, was Block was actually quite famous before Psycho. He's considered one of the fathers of weird horror, and he was actually a protege of H.P. Lovecraft himself. Alfred Hitchcock got interested in Psycho when it was still in galleys. He saw something very interesting in the story, namely that the story kept setting up good characters, protagonists, and killing them off. And Hitchcock was very excited by that idea. So he took the story, and actually, as it was being published, it's rumored that Hitchcock even bought up all the copies of the book, so he could essentially rearrange how the book worked and have a twist ending, have a surprise. And he didn't want anyone to really know it, so the book wasn't really famous until Hitchcock's movie came out. The main changes Alfred Hitchcock makes in Psycho is that he makes Norman Bates actually a much more likable protagonist. Robert Block writes him as an overweight, middle-aged man. He's an alcoholic. He's very obviously obsessed with the occult. Here, Hitchcock makes him seem fairly normal, charming, handsome. Some, some people even stuff dogs and cats, but, oh, I can't do that. I think only birds look well stuffed because, well, because they're kind of passive to begin with. It's a strange hobby. Curious. Uncommon, too. He also makes all his strange obsessions just up to you. You see Lila Crane 
thumbing through a book which is blank and it's just up to you to figure out what it is. In the book, it's very explicit. So it's very interesting the way he plays with the audience expectations. Robert Block also makes Bates his main character, whereas Hitchcock realizes that turning to those likable protagonists and keeping Bates out of the picture as long as possible really adds something to the story. So the next time you revisit a classic movie, I suggest you look at the credits and see if perhaps there's an author you've never heard of who inspired the work. Whether or not the filmmakers changed things or made it even a little better, there's always someone behind it who came up with that amazing story.